Good morning and welcome to our daily reflection for Wednesday 10th of March. My name is John and I'm a licensed lay minister here in Walton on Thames. Today's passage is John 8 verses 12 to 30 in which Jesus is teaching in the Temple of Jerusalem. I will pray and then you might like to pause the video and read the passage. Lord, as we read and study your word today, help us to understand what it might mean. In Jesus' name, Amen. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That's quite straightforward, isn't it? As Christians, we understand that Jesus is the light of the world, the bread of life, the one who can give us living water so that we need never be thirsty again. It's quite straightforward if you know the story. We have the Gospels, the letters of St Paul and others. We have the understanding of Jesus, who was born by the will of the Father through the Holy Spirit, who lived and taught and performed miracles, who died and rose again, who walked again with his disciples and ascended to heaven to return to the Father. We have the understanding of one who was both fully human and fully divine, the Son of God, who came to earth to be our Saviour. But the people listening to him at the time didn't have that understanding. They didn't have the Gospels. That's why they're asking so many questions and why Jesus' answers seem so cryptic to them. Why some of them are getting annoyed with him and indeed why some wanted him out of the way. The Messiah that they were expecting was essentially an earthly figure who would be a great king in the line of David who would restore the fortunes of his people ushering in a golden age of peace and understanding. They could see that Jesus was a great teacher, that he performed miracles, but he didn't fit the mould of their expectations and he didn't follow the rules. They weren't expecting the Son of God, so Jesus' references to the Father went completely over their heads. The spiritual leaders felt threatened by him because he didn't conform to their understanding of the scriptures, didn't conform to their teachings and didn't conform to their rules. To them, a man who referred to God as his father was a blasphemer who deserved to die. It's easier for us, isn't it? We live in an age of understanding, an age of enlightenment. We have the New Testament which of course hadn't been written when Jesus was teaching. We know Jesus. Well, yes, one of the things I know about Jesus is that he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. That's fine because I know what he looks like. Tall, dressed in white, long hair and a beard, reassuringly European looking with piercing blue eyes. I'd spot him easily in a crowd. I know what he would think about the state of the world, about our national leaders, about climate change, third world poverty, and about the pressing social and moral issues of our day. On balance, he would probably be an Anglican, and obviously a man. It's so easy to create Jesus, to create God in our own image, isn't it? That's exactly what I just did. But in reality, I don't know what Jesus will look like when he returns. I don't know whether he will agree with any of my opinions on global politics. And I have no idea whether my Christian understanding of moral issues will coincide with his. One of the things I'll probably find is that I've tried too hard to fit him into a human framework, to fit him into the structure and, dare I say it, the politics of the church as I know it. There will be things that he tries to show me that in my humanity I will really struggle to understand. But I'm thankful 
that my limited understanding of Jesus allows me to understand that he is the Son of God, that he came to be my Saviour, that he is the true bread, the fountain of living water, that he is the light of the world. These are the things that help to sustain me through the day ahead. And these are the things that help me to speak and act, as I think he would have me do, however frequently I may be getting it wrong. And these are the things that can give us confidence that if we do get it wrong, we have the opportunity to say sorry, to be forgiven, and to start with a clean sheet tomorrow. My prayer for today is that Jesus, the light of the world, will illuminate your path and mine, guide our thoughts, our words and our actions, and that we will grow in our knowledge and love of him and of his creation, day by day. I hope you have a great day today in the light of God's presence.